Hey, so I wrapped up configuring your Ultimate Works Ronin lightsaber. So this is installed with Profi V2.2 with a removable chassis. We got our switch plate up here with the two switches. Got our main switch over here, auxiliary over here. You have your shine through blade plug in there. And the illuminate, the NeoPixel connector is illuminated. So when it turns on, it actually shines through this blade plug there. So to access the chassis, you want to rotate the pommel clockwise. There's kind of like a J-lock mechanism there, which locks in place. When you're putting the pommel back on, you'll notice that there's like a little pin right there, as well as a little indent there. So when putting the pommel in, you want to line up the J-lock such that the pin over here, the spring-loaded pin, would rotate into that notch there and lock it in place. So kind of in this orientation. Push it in, and you'll hear that click when you lock it in place. And then to remove the pommel, just rotate it counterclockwise. I think I said clockwise before, so counterclockwise. To remove the chassis, it's a removable chassis, so it will slide out. I usually like to kind of cup over the pommel and then just hit it a little bit and it will slide out. So here's your removable chassis. You got your Profi V 2.2 there. You got your chassis connector up there. Kill switch over here. Battery holder here. Spring side here is for the negative of the battery. And then the, the flatter, roughly flat, flatter side is for the, the positive end of the battery. I've got some detailing and greedly work over there. I've also went over the chassis with uh, pewter and ebony rub and buff to give that kind of like gunmetal gray look to it. Down here you have a fully enclosed 22 millimeter base speaker. So with the fully enclosed setup, the speaker will run all the way up into the pommel, so it can kind of only vent through one way. So speaker quality is pretty good on this one. It pretty much rivals a 24 millimeter speaker. So let's put a battery in here. So I've got a protected 18650 battery. When inserting it, I like to do the negative side first. So you're slotting through there, compress it, and then just slide it into the positive end. And then once that's in, flip the kill switch. Flip the kill switch on. So when the kill switch is over to the left, it's off. To the right, it's on. So you may have noticed I actually also have onboard tactile switches here. That way you can actually play around with the, the chassis without it needing to be connected to the rest of the saber. So to the left, of the profi board and the kill switch is the main button. To the right of it is the auxiliary. So let's put this into the saber itself. So when you're inserting it, even though the chassis is kind of radial, it doesn't really have an alignment, I find that it's a lot easier to insert it with the, the, profi, the profi board facing kind of like the side of the saber because there is some kind of like internal dimensions which would actually make it harder to insert it like this way. So here, there's like something blocking it. But if you rotate it so that the profit board is on its side, it slides right in. So as I said before, when you're inserting the pommel, make sure that this spring-loaded pin here would rotate and slide into this little notch there. So right there push it in, you may need to apply a little bit of pressure. So push it in, rotate it, until you hear that click. So this Sabre does have three blade retention screws. Usually I would just recommend using one um, because if you have two of them pushing opposite against each other, they actually counteract against each other. So in there, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's the illuminated NeoPixel connector, which shines through the blade plug when it's inserted. 
So as I was talking about before, the blade plug is actually pretty short. So I've made it so that the NeoFX connector is deeper into the hilt. So when you're inserting the blade plug, you may need to kind of like float it into place and then lock it in place. Otherwise it just kind of like slides all the way in like that. So what I mean by floating is just kind of like using gravity to kind of put it into or make it so that the blade plug is flush with the emitter and then just lock one of the blade screws, blade retention screws in place. So that way it's, it's flush with this, with the emitter. So let's put a blade in here. So here I have a short kind of dagger demo blade. The emitter is a little bit tight, especially on this blade. Make sure all of the blade retention screws are backed out so that they're not blocking the emitter. Make sure that's there. And then slide it in. So the internal diameter does change slightly right there where it screws in. So I just need to push the blade in. So with this NeoPixel connector, I also have the blade detect functionality set up. So when it makes contact with the blade, it makes that blade insertion sound. And then when you remove it, like so, it makes that blade removal sound. So I'll lock that in place. And then I'm just gonna tighten two blade retention screws. So one here, and then one there. That way the blade retention screws are pushing the blade against the inner wall of the emitter. And then this one I'm just gonna very lightly screw it in. That way it just doesn't fall out. So this is the Ronin font from Kyberphonic. The first one uses the Japanese boot and font sounds, and the second one uses the English ones with the same quotes. So you have blaster block, you have flash on clash. And you have force sound, which is kind of long. Um, to turn on the background music, make sure the saber is off. Make sure that the saber is relatively parallel or facing up. And then do a long press on the, the main button. Just a simple wonder. And then cycling to the, the English Ronin font. So let me cycle back to the Japanese one. So it's the same quote on the Japanese and English. Just in different languages. Just a simple wonder. And then aside from that, I've also loaded some of the, the default fonts that came with the profi board from the factory. Anakin. So it's kind of a Clone Wars Anakin font. It's kind of like a cartoon look font. And then the rest of these... Oh, I believe this is uh, the training uh, Graflex font from A New Hope. Dark Sith Red. So, back to the Japanese running front. So, 
So there you go. There's your uh, Ultima Works Ronin installed with Profi and a removal chassis. Um, I'll send this demo over to you as well as the config file, um, as well as the instructions on FET's website if you want to uh, make changes to the Profi or upload any fonts to it. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to work on the Saber and may the force be with you.